Welcome and thank you all for joining us at this Audio Intelligence Optimizing Music Radio webinar, which is going to be a 45-minute session where we'll be unpacking music programming and data. And with the ever-increasing amount of advancements that are being made in the radio landscape, there are avenues that uh, radio stations can explore that will aid them in gathering insights and then utilizing those findings to benefit uh, the programming status of their respective radio stations in order to, amongst many other things, improve the listener experience, increase engagement, and also potentially unlock new revenue streams. And so during this particular webinar, we're going to be learning about the latest trends. We're also going to be looking at uh, technological advancements and best practices uh, in the field of music programming optimization with data from our esteemed panelists, who I will be introducing to you shortly. And uh, we're very happy to see, actually, that this topic has piqued a lot of interest globally. Uh, we've got uh, quite a, uh, a, a wealth of uh, different people from different parts of the world, uh, including those in Germany, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Hungary, Italy, Austria, Portugal, Spain, Romania, the UK, Cyprus, as well as further afield, uh, we've got representation in this webinar from uh, people in South Africa, in Russia, the United States, Indonesia, Qatar, as well as Trinidad and Tobago. So thank you so much uh, for availing yourselves. Uh, we do uh, look forward to really taking a, a look at uh, this very interesting topic of audio intelligence um, with music programming as the focal point. My name is Andy Lebe, and I am your uh, moderator for this session. Feel free to connect with us if uh, you have a comment or question. Do pop it in that chat box. Uh, if we uh, do have time, we will absolutely address questions as we go along, or we will uh, have a look at the questions and see what we can uh, pick up on at the end of the webinar. Without further ado, let me go around the room by introducing our panelists. First up, we have Antoine Baduel, who is the CEO and owner of Radio FG in Paris. And then we have from Hyperworld, the head of research, Alexandre Houget, followed up by Lionel Guffon, who is the general manager of RCS Europe. And we also are joined by Robert Johansson, who is the head of programming and music at best radio programming. Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for availing yourselves and welcome to the webinar. Thank and you. And we'll begin with you, who uh, you've been in this industry for three decades and more. <laughs> and uh, you've also got a penchant for, for really discovering a lot of talent, uh, the likes of David Guetta, Martin Solveig, Bob Sinclair, Daft Punk, to name but a few. In your, in your um, three decades plus of experience in the radio world, you've seen a lot of evolution in the space, you know, moving from analog to digital, and now we're in this artificial intelligence era. Can you take us through how you at uh, Radio FT, as a niche specialist station, use these data insights to achieve your intended results? Yes, hello Andy, and thank you for this question. Um, with Radio FG, we've always been uh, focusing on data. I mean, uh, this station uh, was established in 1991, and I think we started the, the, the test and the panels in 95, while the phenomenon of electronic music was emerging. And because this phenomenon was increasing, it was the pure beginning, we really needed at this time to be able to make the difference between an underground track and a high potential track. Of course, we, uh, we had discovered many famous French artists with a, an international wide career, such as Daft Punk, David Guetta, Bob Sinclair. But of course, there are, if we identified those artists, it's because we made data. Because those data had us, gave us the conviction uh, that all those tracks were had a much bigger potential than other tracks with the, with the same quality, but for other reasons, maybe because they were released too early, too, too late, or maybe uh, they were too underground. They didn't fit with the market 
so far at the time when we played the track. So we always had a very, very close relationship to um, Datas. And of course, the situation has changed a lot because till uh, the Y2K or 2010, the only way to have data around music was the radio research. Whereas since the DSP, the digital streaming platforms have been launched, the music industry now is focusing on data. So we have other data and uh, thanks to the partnership uh, we have with Hyperworld, we changed a lot the way um, we ask uh, for uh, all the criterias and the way we do the interpretation changed a lot as well. So yes, since the beginning, we've been working with data and I think those data uh, contributed a lot to the marvelous and in international careers that Radio FG uh, um, um, co-built with the, with the artists. Mm. So absolutely important points, Then You did mention Hyperworld. Of course, Alexander is going to take us through uh, the exact procedures that they uh, they go through uh, when they are conducting this research. But uh, again, looking at, at, at Radio FG with you, Antoine, how does this research help you better understand the lifespan of a track and also, you know, get to know um, more in detail listener habits? Um, it's uh, so the, the, the lifespan of a track really depends on its exposure. This is the first point. As Radio FG still is a niche because, of course, dance music is a wide word. But um, regarding the format of Radio FG, we decided to keep our difference and our specificity in playing two thirds of the programmation of the titles as exclusive tracks. That means they are not played anywhere else. So for focusing on these tracks, the, the lifespan of a track is much different from another one produced by the same artist, but playlisted everywhere because there's a burn factor. So the data are very useful for us because it helps us to decide and to, to, to first of all, for, for an exclusive track, that the people don't get bored or have the feeling that even if the track is not burned, that the station is always the same. So it's a, a, a criteria of originality and DNA. And on the other hand, of course, the lifespan of a track depends on its exposure everywhere, especially on the, on the, the other stations and the DSPs. And regarding our listener habits, hmm. we have with, with uh, that format, of course, uh, very faithful listeners, of course, as faithful listeners, they expect a lot from the station. That mm. means a regular renewal of the playlist. That means to risk a lot, to take risk every time when you're playing a track. That means, again, to do tests and panels and, and research and data so that you um, optimize your chances to combine audience risks and originality wonderful and i think that very much encompasses your your formatting strategy you know you are quite exclusive but you're also you've got your finger on the pulse uh, of what your audience wants by continuously conducting these yes okay. yes absolutely and the our formatting strategy consists in um in a hand having very precise and serious results uh, and data but on the other hand Sometimes, um, and Hyperworld know how, how we work, sometimes not follow the data because the data are tools, but they are not our mind. I mean, it's like the IA. I mean, it's a tool, it's an assistance, it's a support, but it's never your mind and your conviction and your, and your conviction that sometimes you can have high-speed tracks, but you can also have... Uh, diesel trucks, they start slowly, but when they take off, they are very strong. And that's the purpose, because you need also to have an artistic consideration. If you play hard trucks of your format, the, the high format trucks, I mean, they, they're in your central format, it's much more, it's much easier to have them tested quickly rather than other trucks who will sound more underground. So our formatting strategy consists in respecting those two thirds of exclusive tracks and two thirds of new releases, 
That's the concept. But on the other hand, it consists in really forcing our convictions, letting time to several tracks, even if the tests are very difficult. Because it's, I mean, you have successes, but you also have tracks that are not in the blockbusters, but we call it in French, succès d'estime. Success mm -hmm. means it's not a success, but the the professional, the audience, the, the the fans, the followers fully respect the track, and it's the first step for for a follow up that could be very successful. I love that because that still speaks to the human element, right? Still being <laughs> necessary uh, in, in combination with the data. Uh, so that's quite an important consideration, especially when it comes to music and, and really engaging and retaining fans. Uh, Antoine, just a, another thing. Um, what are some of the obstacles that you've been faced with and how did how did the findings from the data help you overcome uh, those particular obstacles, particularly because you are in such a, a niche um, market? I would say it's precisely the purpose of being a, a niche. I mean, when you are a niche, especially in France, because France, electronic music is very particular, because in a hand you have worldwide talents with a worldwide reputation and David Guetta, who still has, for instance, a weekly radio show on Radio FG since 25 years, who kept amazing relationship with us. And all the artists who started on that station have the same close and emotional relationship with us. So... First of all, first obstacle, when an artist becomes very mainstream, what part of him keeps inside of your format and your station and what, do, 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 what is, I mean, outside your format? Because it's sometimes too mainstream. So it's the obstacle. First, uh, first thing is when it sounds too commercial, the data are here to give you the, the conviction that no, your fan base loves the track, even if it sounds a little bit too commercial. Because when you're with an underground DNA, you mm -hmm. always need to keep your image, but also following the tracks and the artist, you've been always supporting. That's the first point. Yeah. The other point is always make a balance between your own convictions, even if sometimes you're right, but when you're right too early, you're wrong. And this is another point. It means we are on a French market mm. and there is, um, um, uh, there, is a f there are few comparisons possible, possible comparisons, for, for instance, with the British market. I mean, on the British market, when you're very innovative, you have like a bonus. Whereas on fr in France, if you're too early, it's a malice. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's more difficult. And um, we always need, always need to be always pushing the new uh, genres and aesthetics of music forward, but also respecting the market we're working on, respecting the conservative, people, more conservative listeners. And the, the data are an amazing tool and opportunity for us to have us play the right tracks at the right time at the right schedule and and clocks in the day so it's an it's an, a perfect uh, a perfect tool for us great right tracks right time and of course in radio they often say the right kind of people and those people not just being your audience but the hosts that speak to the audience so my next question to you antoine then relates to the importance or what role um, does having flagship drive shows, so your morning show as well as, as the, the afternoon show with strong hosts play on FG, particularly when it comes to uh, wanting to retain your listeners and to uh, further engage them? It's a good question. Um, um, of course, um, as a moderator of one of the big shows of Radio FG, I will never tell you that the shows are <laughs> unusual or not worth it. Um, no, the shows are really useful for several reasons. Because when you are listening to a radio station, you're not listening to a, to a DSP. Of course, with, with, with no interaction, no moderation, no presence. On Radio FG, the purpose consists in having two live shows um, with uh, uh, moderators that are uh, present uh, since um, many years. And uh, of course, with the with the flagship show, 
uh, we have with big, big names hosted on the station, with the big names, the big stars. I mean, we had Madonna, we had Kylie Minogue, we had Rihanna, but also all the DJs can come to the station. Yesterday we had Offenbach, tomorrow we have Sven Vat, you know, from the techno DJ. Um, I mean, it's amazing because it's an amazing way to confirm with interviews and the presence of the artist, mm. our convictions and our decisions in the playlist. I mean, there's no playlist if there's no editorial environment. And it's very important for the listeners, for the station, but also for the relationship we establish with the artists to have that talk show, that, that conversation that makes the thing easier. And sometimes I need to tell you that some tracks that have very difficult results in the data. When the artist comes to the station and presents his tracks, does a, a, mi a live mix, and when I interview him and I see the conviction, sometimes I retest the track just because I'm, I, I, I'm, I mean, there's something. Um, and, and sometimes after an interview, the test can be changed, can have changed a little bit or, or have changed significantly because the, the, the interview and the presence of the artist has the thing go quicker. And that's pretty important. Wonderful, wonderful. I love that, uh, yes, the presence of good radio hosts as well as content, um, great music. And then, of course, the data aspect is all working seemingly quite well for you at uh, Radio FG. Antoine, thank you so much for- Thank you, Andy that most uh, insightful uh, conversation that we've had there of course you're not going anywhere so if any of you that are with us in this webinar have any questions for Antoine as I said in the beginning feel free to uh, pop through your questions in that chat box now we're moving to um, the research side side of things because we've just had a lovely uh, practical best practice conversation with Antoine and now we're going to get into uh, this whole business of data research and we've got Alexandre Houget who is the head of research at Hyperworld and Hyperworld is a media marketing research institute that is specializing in audio studies uh, for radio operators such as Radio FG and the motto at Hyperworld is smart research for your audio. Um, now Alexandre welcome to you one of your main responsibilities is uh, to define and implement study protocols uh, that are you know, adapted to the specific needs of the clients. Can you take us through the process of uh, the recruitment in the data collection process? Yes, of course. But first, I would like to re to react to one to something Antoine said. Yeah. He told us that um, musical research is using is only a tool, and this is exactly what we think at Hyperworld. Because it may sound strange, but when I first meet with a client, I always tell him if you are looking for answers. I won't give you answers. You will find them in my data. But at the end of the process, the answer is never yes or no. You have to play that title. You have to change its category. We don't provide with that kind of information. This, this is the expertise, the belief, but also the way you feel music that will make the difference. The way you read data will help. But of course, this is still talent and human, which is the main um, adding value in the process. Okay, so we, I'm at Hyperwell. We are in line with what Antoine said, and it used to be the case previously with one client who told me I stopped uh, doing musical research because I feel like uh, my music programmers uh, lost their mojo if i can say so because yeah. they were always hiding behind data and mm. the radio lost is its soul if it's i can say so mm. personality so this is, as an introduction i just wanted to to say that this is the exact same way we see musical research but to to, to answer your questions the way it works um is that um I have to say that the whole process is online from data collection to delivery. We um, recruit respondents uh, into major international access panels. We have agreements with that panels and um, we ask them for us to interrogate um, some 
people who get some specific profiles and that uh, radio station wants to interrogate. So um, we qualify them through an online questionnaire and mm. at, at, if they fit the profiles we are looking for, then we ask them to listen every songs, not the all songs, but maybe 15 seconds of each songs, and then to evaluate it. Do they like it a lot? Uh, have they heard it too much? Uh, the, or maybe they never liked it. So we want to have information, some feedbacks from them. And at the end of the process, we gather all the data together and we deliver data on online platforms. Uh, with uh, Excel uh, exportation and also possible integration to RCS, Selector, or Music Masters. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, in in this age of instant access, uh, I think a rebuttal would be, well, you know, I have a radio station and I've got an audience on social media, for example, why don't I just connect with them and do my own surveying? But then I guess the answer to that question would be, the quality aspect, right? That would be the, the differentiator um, between what you offer uh, versus yeah. someone saying, let me just do it myself. Yeah, oh, you, you, you can do it yourself, of course, but you know, there's, it, it's now um, more than 15 years than we are working on the subject. So I think we have kind of expertise on it. And I like to say that we are the guardians of quality when it comes to to musical research uh since you, you always have you always have to apply some um some golden rules like neutrality consistency mm. security um of course you you can ask directly uh, people what they think about music but you have to make sure that they involve into the study, that they can listen to your material, that they take time to sincerely answer your question, that mm -hmm. sometimes they lie to you, so you have to be able to detect it. And you have also, you have to pay uh, attention that this is not always the same people who give their opinion, because otherwise you will take decision, you will make decision based on only few people. So um, you have to control the data through all the process, making sure that you are building something solid and strong, because the main point is to deliver valuable insights mm. to your clients, because this is your clients have to trust 100%. The data is reading because it will take decision based on it. So it has to be something very strong. And this is what we're intending to do at Hyperwall. Valuable quality insights. I love that. Yeah. And uh, I think <laughs> that is absolutely key, especially in this uh, AI era that we're finding ourselves in. Now, Alexandre, without getting too granular and too technical, uh, can you just walk us through the indicators that you provide to clients like Radio FG in order to classify the state of a song according to uh, your music tests? Yeah. Uh, like uh, Antoine said, the the main interest of um, musical research, and specifically uh, when we talk about call out, call online, is to follow the life cycle of one title week after week in order to see how different indicators evolve. Is patient, for example, patient is the percentage of re of respondents who will tell you that they really like the song. For example, is patient growing up week after week? Is patient growing up along with burn burnout, with the burn? Uh, is burnout stable? Is rejection very high at the beginning and very low at the end? Um, so this is a type of indicators we deliver to our to our clients, um, and with this is data they can adjust their musical programming. Yeah. Um, but of course we can deliver many other indicators. But the basic ones are patient, rejection, and burnout, which are the easiest indicator to understand. Interesting. So repeat those for us again. So it's passion. Re rejection rejection and burnout 
burnout yeah burnout is the percentage of people who would tell you that they used to like the song yeah. but they heard it too much uh-huh Interesting. I'm sure that's something many of us in this room have all felt and said before. Uh, Alexandre, thank you very much uh, for, uh, again, interesting insights uh, about your process at Hyperworld. Of course, Alexandre is not going anywhere. Uh, if you have any questions pertaining to what he said, perhaps you have more questions around other things that are still, though, within the audio intelligence framework, please do pop us a message in that chat box. Now, Robert Johansson uh, from Better Radio Programming, you're with us here today as well. Thank you very much for your time. Um, you're a music programming consultant. You specialize in optimizing and creating stations, programming strategies and music programming as well. And uh, you've also been in this industry for a very long time, over two decades. Uh, I'd like to just uh, pick your brain, if I may, uh, Robert, around the benefits of this data capturing technology, because I do know that you uh, you do use various software, um, G Selector being one of them. And we will, of course, be talking to Lionel Gouffon from uh, RCS Europe. Uh, and he'll talk us through some of, of the technological advancements in that space. But just from your from your end, as someone who uses these kinds of products, what are the benefits of this uh, data capturing technology? Uh, I, I think the important thing now is that you get you can do it much quicker. Like, of course, 25 years ago, when we had pen and paper, we have 600 people coming to a room testing songs two days in a row. That's mm. impossible to do now. Now we have to do it well, online or in other more specific ways. But uh, when, when it comes to the data, I, I think what, what I do with my clients, most mm -hmm. of them are doing call-outs and uh, AMTs or, or library tests. We make sure that we include the uh, ID for the song into the test. So we have everything in the sort. And when we get back, we can actually get it back into, well, in this case, G Selector the next day. And I think it's really good to see we have the history of data. So one of my clients, they have all the music research since about three, four years in their selector Ooh. now. You can see every single song. And when they do the selection for next time, they will really see that, well, this song didn't test for three years. Why should we test it again? So that's quite interesting then. So it's, it's a combination of speed, efficiency, and I guess a, a legacy. So something to look back on and uh, and best make uh, sound results for your for your music programming strategy then, correct? Exactly. Um, following on from that, how does having metadata tags result in better optimization outcomes for uh, music programming? Uh, I think the metadata is crucial for programming. You have to make sure that we sound as we like. Of course, there are some metadata like BPM, gender, artist, the release year, that's quite uh, static. General. We know that. But, mm. but when it comes to the sound, it's really different from station to station. And w what is your strategy? Uh, I think it's really important to define the codes in a way that's relevant for your station. So if you are like a classic rock, you will definitely call their songs different than hot they see. And the, the same for the few songs that goes into the AC arena that also play on CHR. There might be some songs that are on the both stations, but they shouldn't have, usually not have the same code. All right. And then what makes research good and, and what makes research bad? We, we obviously spoke sort of about this earlier on uh with with <laughs> alexander i would say <laughs> yeah, i would say the sample is crucial you really need to have the right people for example why test uh, the chr music on people that love classic rock obviously most people say that that's natural but if you do a too broad inv invitation of of people to the panel you might not know who are in the test right and, and then when the data importing uh, process happens, what exactly are, are sort of the milestones on that? Well, if I have all the IDs on in the music test and have all the, the data, it takes mm. like two minutes to import into G-Selector. So that's a quickie. And of course, you get a 
relevant data in a fast way and don't have to do it manually. Like a couple of years ago, many stations spent like three or four days just to make sure that all the songs from the library test was properly inserted into the, the system. So last week we did, did a sort of a music test for a client and they got everything sorted in, in this case, in an Excel sheet. And like the next day, the whole new music was up and running with the proper categories. Mm -hmm. So once again, that speed, that efficiency, that legacy. And of course, I think the, the word that ties this all together is quality, quality over exactly. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Robert, for, for your commentary there. And of course, Robert isn't going anywhere either. So if uh, if you have some questions around music programming and uh, perhaps want to expand further on what we just touched on, please feel free to once again pop a message into the chat box and uh, I'll be sure to, to get to, to those questions if we do have time uh, at the end of the webinar. Now, Lionel Guffon, who is the general manager of RCS Europe, is also with us. Thank you, Lionel, for your time once again. Lionel, um, you've also been in this industry for, for decades upon decades uh, at RCS, and RCS has a proud history of innovation, currently holding 45 patents in the field of broadcasting. Um, you are the inventors of computerized music scheduling with the legendary selector, uh, you continue to lead the way with multiple award-winning products such as Zeta, Radio Automation, G Selector Music Scheduling, and a number of others. Uh, I would firstly like to just pick your brain, if I may, around how, <laughs> how radio programming software has evolved to leverage uh, in a simple and powerful way all possible metadata and uh, the multiplication of programs and channels. Um, making it possible to kind of manage all of this what what uh, take us through this this process yeah, well, lots of questions in one time <laughs> <laughs> but i will say that robert's already answered to some of them because he explained the good part of g selector which is really importing data from the from external and you can now importing data from so many things you know as research but also of, of course on the stream how much people you had at the beginning of the song, how much people you have at the end of the song. Of course, it's not very qualified, but it gives you some idea about what happened on your station. Uh, so G Selector, uh, is a, now it's, it's become an old software because it's more than 20 years old, it's on the market. And we bring uh, several new ideas. And the, 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 main, the main idea is that you, you get, you, you can choose the way you want to schedule, to schedule. So if you want to schedule, as I said, the old way was artist song and very, very mm. rigid things and negative way. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want that. Today we turn that in the other way. Uh, so you can really say to the software, "This is what I want. I would like," and uh, the algorithm try to answer to your request. You know, and and this is totally different. Um, one of the point you ask also is how we do to have several stations. The, 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 the original idea was to have one library. And each time we coding, so we put metadata on a song, for example, you have a technical part, titles, title, name, is it a national or international music? So this is technical because it will normally never change. But all the other parts, like uh, the song code, which is talking, which is a very, very important point, is totally different from a station to another. And, and sometimes from a human to another human, you know. It's, if you ask the question, how do you feel uh, the song code of these songs, you never have the same answer. But uh, so so we have one base with technical artistic information. And after you have the pure uh, scheduling way and all the things you want to add to to, to your content. So. It, it's very it's 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 giving us lots of flexibility for that and now radio fg is one of the best example because today they produce uh two mm. million open, maybe around 40 <laughs> 40 stations from one base so uh you know it's uh, of mm. course the quality of the the work you do how we say coding the coding the, the sound card is really crucial of course it's the beginning of everything Wonderful. I think it's it's quite innovative that you can take, as you said in Radio FG's example, uh, through one library, you can then have substations 
uh, that then create uh, different playlists and then you've got a whole other you know, captive market over there. Uh, very, very in in innovative indeed. Um, Lionel, more with you. I, I just want to ask you about, I've, I've spoken to, to Robert, obviously, about, you know, good research and bad research, et cetera. But when it comes to data, as uh, similar to the question asked before, what makes bad data versus good data? <laughs> uh, at our level, it's not easy because we just received the data <laughs> from the external. So we don't know uh, if they are good or not. But of course, the, the, you know, the, the quality of the data and how they are produced. It's, it's very, very, very important. We, Alexandre also explained lots of details around that. So I would say that today, have some good data is really a decision maker because when now scheduling a song, I would say, is something that more or less everybody know, and we know the story how the song will lie uh, during two months, three months, six months. But the mm -hmm. decision is to know which song you put into that. So <laughs> it's where. Data is really the key because it's, it's give you the decision, the final decision. And uh, it's, it's really why it's so important now. Uh, and, and I guess as, as a follow up to that, uh, you know, with live streaming becoming so popularized and a lot of people jumping on to listening, uh, online listening platforms and kind of curating their own uh, playlists, et cetera. How does live data assist programmers uh, instead of having them rely on audience measurements or surveys, which aren't as frequent? It's, I would say it's, a, it's another human decision because you can directly inject the, this live data and change the scheduling in live, I would say, or the day after or the next hour. But of course, maybe it's the, maybe too tight. You know, you have to take a, to thinking a little bit and, and to, to analyze more the things in global. And before before doing that, but of course now we have so many informations coming to the station, you know. Mm -hmm. And the last the last very good is of course the, the the electronic measurement where we can have with several days or weeks some mm -hmm. very very good information regarding what we had in the past. You know, it's, it's totally different. Speaking of things that are totally different, is there anything that's new and totally different, either in terms of new products that you are uh, going to be releasing soon or new features, anything like that on the horizon from uh, RCS? I, I would say the, the, the G selector is now very mature. You know, it's a product that uh, not move a lot. There's so many things inside. It's, we, we talked before about what AI, what the intelligence artificial can do for that. And, um, it's where we're working today, of course. It took all these data coming from all these places, all the different research or information coming and see how we can work with them. You know, I would say today the, the idea is to know how we work with the new things. <laughs> so we're all learning together. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lionel. There. Um, I just now am quite time conscious. It has just gone quarter to three CET. So we have been uh, talking for about 45 minutes. But uh, as promised, I did say that we uh, would uh, cast our eyes to some questions from those of you who are in attendance here. If you have any questions for our respective panelists, um, please do let us know. I see there is one here on the screen that's saying a lot of data uh, are generated today on music streaming platforms. Some are available through uh, APIs. Is there a way to integrate them into G Selector, Lionel? That one is yeah, for sure. It's it's what we do every day. We're using the API to enter the information directly in G Selector or Excel 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 format also. So. Uh, I, the, the station can call the, the, the RCS support somewhere and the, you will have the answer because it's something we do every day now. So it's totally open to that. Okay, Omar, thank you for that question. I hope that that answer uh, answers your, uh, your question. Anyone else, any more questions, please do feel free to uh, pop your, uh, your question into the chat box. We do have a few minutes left to further engage with you. Okay. <laughs> if yes, not, I, I, think, <laughs> I, think, 
<laughs> something, and, and, and I think the what Lionel and uh, Robert said w was really interesting. And I think we also need to consider the data as, as something global. I mean, you have, of course, the research that we do uh, with, yeah. the, for instance, the call out, as uh, Alexander said. I mean, so these are the, the, the so that when you talked about um, the good and the bad data, I mean, yeah. they are the good and the bad questions. I mean, there are sometimes the questions you ask, but you know the answer. <laughs> so this is a bad question. And you also have uh, the other data, like, of course, be, um, uh, among and beside the callouts, you got, of course, the, the Shazams, uh, the, the social networks, um, mm. the, street, the top streaming. Uh, and, and this is pretty important. I mean, with Radio FG, in, in the, inside of the Radio FG group, we run four radio stations in Paris, uh, terrestrial, I mean. Um, so um, FG for house music, deep house, and uh, I would say quality um, music in general. FG Chic for lounge, which is a very small niche. Maximum for alternative uh, uh, genres in electronic music. And of course, for that music, um, you, you can't invest on data like call out, which would be never uh, recut uh, for in, in, in your business model, of course. But on the other hand, these are emerging chores that yeah. and, and all the other data also need to be considered because at the end, this is the balance is the one who uh, made by the by the program director. And it's pretty important because it's if you only focus on one kind of uh, research, one kind of data, of course, you will really consider focus on the target group. But you will um, the, the, now the market is hybrid. People are listening to radio stations inside their cars, FM, DAB, sometimes with their app, in the street with their app. On, uh, on special devices like, you know, Sonos or whatever in their, in, their, in their living room. So, I mean, and of course, they're not listening to radio stations only. They're listening to your brand on YouTube. They're listening to your playlist on, on, on Spotify. And it's really important to consider that each device also is a way to uh, a, a target group and um, a, a kind of people you, who follow you. So the, the, if you do the right balance, I mean, the right balance, it, it consists in considering all the genres, but also all the data. Hmm. Robert, do you, do you uh, disagree or agree or have anything to add to uh, what Antoine has just said? No, I, 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 I totally agree. And uh, when it comes to well, the difference with, when the test of music, the new songs, it's really hard because... Uh, one problem we see when songs don't get a good score is that they try to test the song way too early. Right. And, and of course, I, I guess for Radio FG, that would be much harder because it's a niche station. They don't have the same reach as, let's say, if you have a new song with uh, Miley Cyrus, of course, that song is exposed all over the world on all different platforms. It's much easier to to quickly get uh, a reaction, whether it's good or bad. Anyone else, uh, Alexandre, anything for, uh, from your end? Um, I, I mean, uh, Robert told, told before that the key point when you make some research, yeah. if we are only talking about research, it to have a good sample and that, to us, that's the key. But also you need a strategy behind. You need to have a station positioning you you need to have many things this is not only about the research about data this is also about how you are you what do you want to do with your station <laughs> and what are your belief that's also a key point to me Lionel, any uh closing commentary from from your end Whoa. <laughs> you know we are the machine. We are in the machine. Yes, <laughs> we, we are taking information from everywhere. <laughs> show how it's work, how it is, and after the people decide. So we are in the machine. But mm. yes, uh, all the last commentary are totally right. Yes, it's uh, it's it, uh, someone some year ago we we're talking about meta uh, 
uh, you know, big data, but somewhere today we have lots of channels who can give us some data about what's, how react the audience, how react the people, which kind of people, as, as uh, uh, Antoine explained, it's really very different. And today we must be capable to use all this information. And after that, it's how to make the decision, but uh, it's the work from the people who are scheduling or making the, the stations uh, things, but uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, AI will really help us one day for that. Uh, let's see <laughs> how it's <it'll> change. <laughs> Yes, we'll see. I think this is, you know, uh, we've only scratched the surface here. Uh, we've done what we could, you know, in a, an hour's conversation. I think the AI conversation is something that uh, can be had for a much longer period of time. And of course, we are hoping to further extend and, and have more of these kind of webinars where we, we delve into other aspects of audio intelligence. So I would like to just uh, close off by thanking you all for attending and uh, giving us your time uh, to the gentlemen, uh, my panel. Thank you very much for engaging and uh, also availing yourselves to, uh, to have this uh, much interesting uh, conversation around audio intelligence, looking at data and music programming. Suffice to say, it's a good blend of data, music, and uh, artistic intelligence that are the markers of the industrialization at scale of customizable programming and the hyper distribution uh, across multiple platforms. So it's large. It's a large space, like I said to you, and uh, we will. Um, look at perhaps having another or several other webinars where we can further expand on some of these topics and also delve into other avenues uh, around the audio intelligence domain. So uh, if you've got any other questions uh, that we haven't necessarily gotten to now or suggestions around subject matter or topics around this umbrella topic, once again, please feel free in uh, these closing minutes of this webinar to pop in whatever questions, comments that you may have in the chat box. From my end, uh, my name is Andy Leve. Once again, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, yes, we will be certainly doing this again. So uh, do look out for all of us on social media where we will keep you informed about uh, any other webinars that we will be having. Gentlemen on the panel, once again, thank, thank you very much for your time and your you. expertise. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, all of you. Bye.